Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to talk to you about continuity, a function being continuous, and also about the intermediate value theorem in this video. A continuous function has no breaks in its graph. A break in the graph, we call that a discontinuity. So a place where something is not continuous, we say that's a discontinuity. There are some major types of discontinuities we'll go over. The first one is a point discontinuity. The idea here is if I have this line and I have a hole, in the line, then I'm discontinuous only at a point. There's this single point where I'm not continuous, where I have a break in the graph. We could also have a similar thing where instead of just a hole, maybe we define that point, that value at some other y value above or below the hole. Both of these point discontinuities are also referred to as a removable discontinuity. The idea is if I were just to fill in one value, say at this hole, then it would be continuous. I would have a smooth graph with no breaks in it. Same thing if I were to take this y value where I'm defined here and just move it inside of where that hole is, I would have a continuous graph that has no breaks. So a point discontinuity will also refer to as a removable discontinuity. Other types that are non-removable, we have a jump discontinuity. So maybe you're on one piece of graph and then you jump up to another piece of graph and continue. We have a similar thing over here on the right. Whether you're going to an open hole and then jumping to a closed hole, or whether you have an open hole to another open hole, the idea is we're on one piece, we must jump to another y value to continue. These are non-removable. We can't just fill in one point and say that these are connected graphs. Another type of non-removable discontinuity is an infinite discontinuity, also known as a vertical asymptote. So here as we travel toward our vertical asymptote, we go infinitely negative, and then we have a large break in the graph. We jump to the other side of the vertical asymptote, the infinite discontinuity, and then we can continue on the function to the right again. There's no way for me to define just one point and make this a smooth graph with no breaks. So this is non-removable as well. It doesn't matter if I go to the same infinite value on one side of the discontinuity or not, these are going to be non-removable. Let's go ahead and work an example here. I've drawn the graph of a, you know, a crazy function that I've created. We want to find the values of x where the function is discontinuous, in other words, where it's not continuous, and we'll classify each type. So if I start over here on the left side and I continue on the graph until I get to this weird point where there's a hole, so we'll notice right there, there's a problem that is a point discontinuity. And then if I continue here, I have another hole, so that's going to be another discontinuity. It's not continuous at this negative one value of x, that's a point as well. As we cross the y-axis, we're fine until we get to positive one. So now here we have a jump discontinuity at positive one. And then at positive two, you'll notice it looks like we have a vertical asymptote. We have an infinite discontinuity. So here we have infinite discontinuity. And then it looks like as we continue on the other side of the asymptote, we get to the end of our domain for our graph. So let's go ahead and classify these. We'll go ahead and say at, I'm gonna group these together since they're the same type. X equals negative two and X equals negative one. We have a removable discontinuity. That's a point discontinuity. Uh, we have different types here, maybe I'll separate these. So we'll say at x equals positive 1, uh, we have a non-removable discontinuity, and that is a jump discontinuity. So I'll go ahead and say it's a jump there. And at x equals positive 2, we have another non-removable discontinuity. but it's a different type, right? We have an infinite discontinuity here. So sort of big families of discontinuities are removable and non-removable. If it's a point discontinuity, it's removable. Anything that's not a point discontinuity, we lump into the other category of non-removable. Let's look at another example, but here I just have an equation instead of a graph. So we wanna find, again, the values of x where it's discontinuous. A discontinuity, when we have a rational function, is going to likely occur when the denominator is zero. We can't have divide by zero. So we want to figure out when is x squared minus 25 equal to zero. That's going to be when we have a discontinuity. That will be a problem for us, right? In the graph, some weird part. Well, if we add our 25 to both sides, 
we'll get x squared is equal to 25. And then if we root both sides, don't forget, remember when we root the square, the other side gets plus or minus. So x equals positive or negative 5 is going to be a problem for us. That's where it's discontinuous. Now we need to figure out what we have at each point. Now deciding algebraically instead of graphing how to do this, remember that when a factor reduces, then that's going to give us a hole in the graph. Okay, so that will be a point discontinuity. If we have a factor left over that causes a problem for us that does not reduce, then that's going to give us a vertical asymptote. Okay, we will get an infinite discontinuity. So let's go ahead and do some factoring with this, right? So we have x plus 5 on the top, and the bottom as a difference of squares factors as x plus 5 x minus 5. So if we reduce the common factor of x plus 5 in the numerator and the denominator, think about what problem that's reducing. Where is x plus 5 equal to 0? Because x plus 5 is the factor that we reduced, right? Well, that's at x equals negative 5, where that problem was. So because the factor x plus 5 reduced, and when we set x plus 5 equal to 0, we get that x is negative 5, we have a hole at x equals negative 5. Now, what you can see here is our reduced version, if I write it over here, 1 over x minus 5, the x minus 5 factor did not reduce, and where is this factor 0? Well, this factor is 0 at the positive 5 value, right? So at x equals 5, we have an infinite discontinuity. We have a vertical asymptote, right? So we have an infinite discontinuity at x equals positive 5. Okay, so this is removable. Here we have a point discontinuity. You could say removable. Here we have an infinite discontinuity, or you could say non-removable at x equals positive 5. In general, if we want to talk about a function being continuous at an x value, we'll need to check three things. First of all, we'll need to check is f of a defined? Is the function defined at that value x equals a? In other words, is a in the domain for the function? So that's easy to check. We can look and see if it's on the graph or if plugging in we get some value. The second one, we'll need to check does the limit as x approach a exist for the function? In other words, do we get the same y value from both sides as we approach a? We'll make an additional note here that if you're checking for continuity just from one side at an endpoint, we will only check from one direction where we have graph of that function in the domain. And then the last thing is the limit as x approaches a of the function equal to f of a. That's just saying are the values for part one and two the same? When I plug a into the function and get a y value, is that the same value I get when I find the limit? as x approaches a. If all these three things are true, then we are continuous at the value x equals a. We can use this idea of continuity in something like the intermediate value theorem. We'll have many theorems in calculus that rely on a function being continuous on an interval, but this is one that we might have even seen before calculus that relies on this idea of continuity. The intermediate value theorem says if a function is continuous on a closed interval a to b, then we should obtain every y value between the y value on the left side of the interval and the y value on the right side of the interval at least once, right? So if my interval is from x equals a to x equals b, and I have this y value at a, and I have this y value at b, I should hit every y value in between. So in this particular instance, even if I didn't know the picture of what this graph looked like between this point and this point, you can see that my y value is positive over here on the left side, right? So at x equals 0, I have a positive y value. And over here, at x equals 4, I have a negative y value. And if I tell you that there's a continuous function between this point here, that's a positive y value, and this point here, that's a negative y value, then I know I've got to cross the axis to get from a positive y value to a negative y value, right? So if I know those things are true, it will have an intercept between x equals 0 and x equals 4 in this picture. But that's only true 
if my function is continuous on the interval 0 to 4. It's possible that we have some sort of a weird thing like a jump or we have an asymptote where you know I'm negative here and I'm positive here but because I simply jump at one point from one y value to another I'm able to jump across the axis and not actually cross the axis on my graph. So I don't have an intercept because this is not continuous. Over here, we imagine starting negative and then I approach some asymptote and immediately jump positive on the other side of the asymptote. So because these are not continuous on the interval 0 to 4 for x, then we cannot guarantee we're going to hit every y value between these two on this interval. Okay, those are some ideas involving continuity and its application, the intermediate value theorem. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.